I'm Jacob Reed, joined by newly appointed head men's basketball coach, Nathan Wally. Coach, appreciate you coming on here for Coffee with Coaches so Muskingum community can get to know you a little bit better. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, happy to be here and thanks for having me on. Yeah, so just to give you a little background, um, Coffee with Coaches is sponsored by a company called Jennings Java. And this is a little bit of an example of the product. They are a student athlete founded company here at Muskingum. And uh, Daniel Jennings actually started the company in his dorm room and has kind of grown it into a company where they're kind of outsourcing it to hotels and various different places. And they run it out of Columbus now. So they've been gracious to partner with us here at Muskingum. And it's just exciting to kind of grow their brand with them and, and give them a little bit of exposure. So uh, just a, an example of what muskies can do whenever they leave New Concord. So. Well, I'm a, I'm a coffee drinker, so I'm going to have to give it a try. Yeah, absolutely. So just to, just to get you started here, uh, tell us a little bit about where you grew up and then how you got involved in basketball. Yeah, so grew up in Dayton, Ohio, um, born and raised there. Uh, got into basketball at a, a really early age. My, uh, my dad is a longtime high school basketball coach. And um, so I can remember you know, when I was little, just going to the, the high school games, being the, the ball boy, uh, you know, looking for any opportunity I could get on on the court and get some shots up and everything. But uh, just really grew, grew up around it. And, um, you know, it was it was definitely something that my dad and I, you know, bonded over. And, and as I continued to, um, you know, grow up and everything, he, he became um you know, he coached me uh, in some of my my middle school years, and then he actually became my my high school coach, uh, which was awesome. It's it's a great memory to to have gotten to play for him, and uh, so my passion and love for the game, uh, without a doubt, um, you know, started there just kind of with that that relationship with my dad. Absolutely. So you went to Bowling Green for your, for your undergraduate. Kind of walk us through. Uh, why you chose Bowling Green and how that process went? Yeah, I uh, you know I was kind of between a few schools. You know, coming out of of high school, uh, one thing that I kind of wish I would have looked into more is is playing um, at the Division three level. I, you know, I, I wouldn't have have really been able to play at any higher level, but um, but I did. I wasn't really. I don't know. For some reason, I just wasn't looking into that as much. And so I was looking at some bigger schools. I knew I wanted to study sport management. Uh, at the time, I wanted to get into athletic administration, whether that was, you know, being an athletic director uh, or, you know, trying to get into the front office of a professional sports organization or, or whatever. But um, Bowling Green had a had a great sport management program, you know, at the time. It was, you know, that degree was really up and coming and Bowling Green was like one of 50 schools who was accredited uh, or who were accredited um, in the country. And now, you know, I feel like every school has it and, and um, it's a big deal now uh, everywhere. But at the time, like BG had just one of the top notch programs. And then the other part was I had a really close buddy of mine who was going to Bowling Green as well. So I kind of had a, a built in roommate and, uh, you know, I, I roomed with him for all four years and he ended up being the, the best man in my wedding. So um, just a couple different factors for, for why I picked it. Yeah, absolutely. So you talked about wanting to work in sport management, wanting to kind of go the administration route, but obviously now you're, you're in the coaching realm. So what kind of was the starting point of that process and what led you into wanting to become a college coach? Yeah. So I mentioned I wasn't really looking to play coming out of high school, but, you know, once I stepped on campus at, at BG my freshman year, just felt like something was missing. Um, you know, I wasn't around basketball or it, it didn't seem like I was going to be. And so I got interest in, I reached out to the men's basketball program at Bowling Green and, uh just wanted to see if if there was a an opportunity to hop on and help out you know as a student assistant or or whatever and um so had two years of that got some really good you know inside knowledge of kind of how college athletics uh, you know college basketball program operates and runs 
But then my my passion for coaching really came my junior year. I had an opportunity to, to hop on as a varsity assistant coach at a, a local high school, Maumee High School up in the Toledo area. Um, and my junior and senior year, you know, just having that hands on experience of, of coaching, it was like, all right, this is actually what I want to do. I want to try to make a, a career out of it. Right. So from Bowling Green, you ended up uh, working as full time assistant at Wittenberg and DePaul here in Ohio. Kind of talk about how those experiences as an assistant coach have led you to be prepared and excited to become a head coach here at Muskingum. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, my I the time at Wittenberg was a really forming time in my my coaching career, I feel like, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to hop on staff uh, under uh, Bill Brown, who's the all time winningest coach at, at Wittenberg University. And, um, you know, I was there for his last year. My first year there was was his last year and he just had such an incredible run. So I was fortunate to to get a year with him. And then there was a transition phase where uh, Matt Crosey took over, who was a Wittenberg alum. Uh, he took over the program and, you know, we we just kind of uh, built a foundation there where, you know, we I just feel like we it's simple. But, you know, we focused on just getting the right guys in the program um, and focused on on fundamentals and just kind of put our head down and went to work. And the results we saw from that was was incredible. And um, it definitely laid kind of a path for for what I'd like to do here. Uh, you know, gave an example of kind of how to build a program the, the right way. Um, and then my, my time at DePaul, you know, again, I only got a year there and it was it was with another Division three coaching great in Bill Fenlon. It was it was his last year last year. And um you know, just really fortunate to have been able to, to hop on staff there. Um, he had been at, at DePaul for nearly 30 years, and it, it was just incredible how much of a family kind of atmosphere uh, he was able to create with the program in terms of all of his alumni just care so greatly about him and about the program because of what he did for them. And they're all just killing it in, in life right now as, as uh, being successful in, in work and as husbands, as fathers. And so, you know, his, his saying is it's a relationship business and, and he lived it every day. And I definitely learned a lot from that. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously coming under the tutelage of some really good Division three coaches, you had some success making it to the, the final four in a season. So what about those experiences are makes you excited to to lead your own team here at Muskingum? Yeah, I, I think um, kind of like what you said, I just I've been fortunate enough to have have some mentors um, and I throw my dad in there, too, uh, you know, who have just kind of laid a foundation and have kind of shown me the way of, you know, how to prepare to be a head coach. And so, you know, you're probably never actually really prepared until you, you get into it. But, um, you know, there's a lot of coaches out there who I think don't do as as great of an intentional job of, of training their assistants to become head coaches. But um, that wasn't the case for me. I had great mentors who, who prepared me. And um, and again, I think just because of the length, you know, the five years I was at Wittenberg, that probably stands out the most. And, and because I was able to come in when, you know, we were around average or just above average, and we really turned that program around into a national power and ranked top five in the country multiple years and, and all of that. So, um, you know, I, I think actually seeing and being a part of the actual building process to get there uh, is really going to help me um, try to establish the, the same thing here. Right. So obviously when you were looking for your next step as a coach, the job at Muskingum came open, you jumped at the chance. What were some of the things that really attracted you to Muskingum? What are some of the things about this, this university and this community that you're excited about? Yeah, I was, you know, born and raised in Ohio. So, you know, a job comes open in Ohio um, at the division three level, you know, I, I was definitely interested, you know, I've got so many 
great connections throughout the state, which I think helps from a recruiting standpoint, but it also just kind of gives, um, you know, you just kind of feel at home, right? And right. I'm very aware of, of how strong the OAC is, you know, not only in basketball, but across the board in all athletics. And so it's a very premier conference in the country. Um, and the fact that all these schools are in Ohio is, is crazy. Yeah. Um, but then when I, when I stepped on campus, and I got to meet people. It's just, it's, it's incredible. I mean, you, you don't even feel like an outsider once you step on campus. There are so many uh, friendly faces and, and welcoming people. And, and you know, it, you can tell that everyone has their back and wants to support each other. And there's that camaraderie that uh, is really important to me because, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm also looking for, you know, a career home. I feel like I've been on this path of being an assistant at different places and it was time to kind of find home. And, and I feel at home here at, uh, at Muskingum. Yeah, absolutely. So we talked about some of the people who shaped you into becoming a coach. Looking at yourself, what are some of like the behavioral and personality traits that you think leads to your success as a coach and you think you can utilize to become a, a successful coach here at Muskingum? Yeah, I, you know, I think I'm a very thoughtful person and genuine person. So I, my strengths, I wish I was kind of that rah-rah guy that once I step into the room, like the whole room lights up and you can just feel the energy. I'm a little bit, you know, people might think I'm a little bit reserved initially, but um, I really like to just kind of observe the environment and, and get get my footing. Um, and I'm I'm really thoughtful and genuine in terms of yeah, I just don't believe in, you know, just kind of saying stuff to say stuff like I want it to mean something. Um, and so, you know, I think that's a big a big trait of mine. You know, I think patience got to have patience. And um, I'm I'm someone who. Um, really likes to be prepared. I'm, I'm not as good at just kind of winging it. Um, mm -hmm. And so that that being prepared, I think, helps uh, in a lot of different situations, um, you know, both on the court and off the court as I step into, you know, a, a head coaching role. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously we're on Coffee with Coaches and coffee is a great way to start your day. So kind of walk us through what the start of your day looks like every day here since you've been at Muskingum? Yeah, well, uh, first off, still living out of boxes. We uh, we we just moved in not too long ago. It's my wife Kay and and my two little boys, uh, Mick, who's two and a half, and then we've got a two month old Leo. And so every morning is actually a little bit different. Um, you know, it's it's getting up with with the boys. Hopefully they let us, you know, sleep in to about mm -hmm. 730 or so. But uh, without a doubt, we're, you know, both my wife and I are reaching for that coffee pot as as soon as we can once once we're up mm -hmm. and everything. But, um, you know, it's 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 great to, you know, get the boys up and, and spend some time with them in the morning. Uh, enjoy breakfast together, get get the cup of coffee and everything and and kind of get get the day right uh, going right uh, just with that kind of company. Right. So we talked a little bit about your your life outside of work. What energizes you when you get to work, when you get to the office? What are what are some of those things that motivate you and get you excited? Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's working with this age group honestly the the 18 to 22 year olds um you know they're they're still trying to figure stuff out but um for me there's just it it, it energizes me that i can have an impact in in kind of preparing them because they're they're on the doorstep for the next you know 40 years of their life uh you know getting getting a job you know getting married having a family all that kind of stuff and um, I really view my my role as an influential role to a lot of those things. It's not just about the four years that they're here and then, you know, they're off and we never talk again. Like I want to I want to create those relationships. And so it's really that that individual relationships that that I really like to build with with the guys. Um, and then just, you know, obviously once once practice and, and games start rolling, um, you know, being in that locker room and just being a tight knit group, tight knit family and 
uh, and going and seeing what what you can do together is 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 exciting too. Yeah, absolutely. So talked a little bit about your coaching past, Wittenberg DePaul, being the student assistant, Bowling Green. What are what is one work related accomplishment that really sticks out to you that you're really proud of? I, you know, the the 2017-18 basketball season um, with Wittenberg, that that was the year that we kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, no one was really expecting anything of us. We uh, we I think we we're picked to come in like fourth or something like that in, in the league that year. We were super young, just graduated a bunch of a bunch of seniors. Um, and so no real expectations which actually kind of took some pressure off and, and we could really just focus on getting better each day. Uh, and, you know, next thing you know, we, we have won our first 22 games of the season and we're ranked third in the country and, and we end up going on and, and we go 27 and three. And unfortunately we lose in the, in the second round of the tournament uh lose to a team who ended up being national runner up but that's that's how close we felt like we were to to being a, a final four and you know national championship caliber team and when you look at how that entire season unfolded it's just kind of crazy to think about where we started um and so definitely proud of that that's probably that season is is my proudest moment yeah so Kind of shifting gears away from coaching, want people to get to know you more as a person here. So I've got some some lighthearted questions for you. Okay. So what is one thing that most people don't know about you? Um, so I was a 13 time intramural champion at uh, Bowling Green in, in sports like team handball and wiffle ball and cornhole and all sorts of stuff. So uh, well, well-rounded second tier athlete at, uh, at Bowling Green. So if we ever get a handball team here, you're saying that you, oh, I'm, a, I'm a stud. Yeah. I'm your, there ring. we go. There we yeah. go. Um, so what is something that you recently saw that made you smile? Um, you know, my, my two month old Leo, he's just starting to, you know, smile and, and make eye contact and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of making noises that are, that are fun. So, um, anytime he kind of, he's looking at, at me and, and smiling, it's, it's a good day and it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I bet. I mean, obviously changing jobs, becoming a first time head coach is stressful enough when you got a two month old son i can only imagine kind of the household and the craziness going on with you yeah. so give you major yep. props so um yeah. when when you were a kid what was the one thing that you wanted to be when you grew up um i wanted i mean you know i i was uh you know michael jordan was was my guy he was by far my favorite player and you know i just i loved watching him and um, you know, I, I mentioned my my dad got me into basketball, but as a as a fan and as a kid, um, you know, because of Michael Jordan, I wanted I wanted to be uh, I wanted to be Michael Jordan. I wanted to be like Mike. But, uh, you know, I wanted to be, you know, professional basketball player at, at the time. But, uh, you know, as time time went on, I realized that that definitely wasn't wasn't going to be in the cards. And, right. and so I uh, I shifted. I'm still in the game, though. So. That's right. Got to find find your place in the game. So, yeah. Um, so uh, when your coaching career is done here at Muskingum, you know, 40 years down the road, when you lead us to five national championships, you're the yeah. greatest coach of all time. When they make that movie about your life, who is going to be the one person that you want to, to be you in the movie? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I love I love Ted Lasso. So mm -hmm. I think uh, I would pick Jason Sudeikis to uh, – to be me. I know everyone out there is probably thinking I, I got to think of a bald guy, but I would just tell Jason he's got to shave his head. That's fine. Right. I mean, he's he's growing go. a mustache for Ted Lasso. Just shave mm -hmm. your head. So That's a good choice. I can see that. <laughs> um, another funny question here. So obviously Marvel superheroes, those are big right now, those movies. So if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Without a doubt, flying. So I don't have to deal with, okay. deal with the airports. I can't, I can't yeah. stand airport stuff right now. It's just, it's a nightmare. I'd love to be able to just fly and, and go wherever I want, uh, you know, just yeah. like that. Right. Um, 
another off the wall question. If you could only eat one item for every meal for the rest of your life, what would that be? I think it'd be Chipotle. I think, I think Chipotle is, you know, you got a nice, nice variety, uh, of toppings and stuff, even if you got to just go with the same order every time. Uh, I don't, I don't know that I could, uh, get tired of, of a good yeah. Chipotle bowl or burrito. Yeah. We obviously we got one in Cambridge and yeah. I've only been there for like a year and a half now, I think. So we're lucky to have that close by my first couple of years here. We didn't have that. And I was craving it really bad. So it's nice to have around for sure. Um, so Outside of basketball, when you're sitting down, relaxing, watching TV, what's your go-to show typically? Um, you know, we, my wife and I, kind of go through a bunch of different ones. I, you know, I think if I'm by myself, it's probably some sort of of sports. I, I really like the the different, you know, like thirty for thirties, and you know, like I'm watching Hard Knocks right now with the De- mm-hmm. Detroit Lions, and I kind of like the behind the scenes stuff, uh, right. those kind of shows, but um outside of that like Kay, my wife and i you know we're big game of thrones fans um we we like that show a lot um gosh i'm i'm blanking we we got uh there's a bunch of different i mean we we get through netflix and we got netflix hulu apple tv i mean we're we're kind of i mentioned ted lasso is obviously a a show we enjoy so we're we're looking forward to that coming out here uh i think in the fall so Cool. So, yeah. Yeah. so you talked about like watching hard knocks. What's your what's your three sports teams? What's your baseball team, your football team, your basketball team? So I don't really have a basketball team. I guess mm-hmm. if 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 you told me I had to pick one, it would actually be the Golden State Warriors. I just I, I really like how I know I know front yeah. runner. Right. I, right. But I just, you know, Steve, Steve Kerr and, and Steph mm-hmm. Curry. And I just I love how those guys um you know approach the game and how they play the game um but in terms of fanhood die hard cincinnati red cincinnati Bengals fans so finally the Bengals have have given me uh you know some some reason to kind of be be uh proud of them i guess Mm -hmm. but uh the reds are reds are killing me right now so they're they're rough they're rough yeah yeah i'm a cleveland guy so Obviously, yeah. we got in baseball, but uh, the Browns are an absolute mess. So, yeah, I'm I'm figuring out real quickly that uh, this is this is kind of Cleveland territory. Over it here, is. There, so. There's a few people floating around that are Cincinnati fans. I know Carrie; she's a big, I know, she's a big Bengals fan. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, just to kind of wrap up here, you're looking forward to this season here, your first season as a head coach. What are some of the things that you're really looking forward to, and some of the things that fans can expect when they come to watch your team play this year yeah I you know I'm we're focusing a lot on on the culture of the program and and you know it's it's a really neat group already I've I've gotten to meet with um all the guys individually we just had a team meeting last night it's a it's a really neat group with some great personalities and just based on you know film I've watched from from the previous years like we've we've got some pieces um, the other encouraging thing is, you know, it sounds like it's a really tight knit group off the floor. And so we want to kind of take all of that and get us all moving in the right direction or the same direction, I should say, uh, on the floor. And so, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that when fans come out and, and watch, you know, we're going to we're going to really get after it on the defensive end. Um, you know, we're going to have great effort great attitude. Um, you know, we're going to be cheering for each other. Uh, and I, I just really hope that, you know, kind of the the mood and the the attitude that, that we bring to the game, we're going to play it with joy. Uh, and hopefully that's infectious where, you know, people watching are, are feeding off of that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, obviously a big part of D3 coaching is recruiting. So if a recruit wants to become a part of the men's basketball program, wants to be a part of the team that you're building, what is the best way for them to contact you here moving forward? Yeah, my uh, so my my email is is on the website. Um, Obviously, you know, I think that's a good way to just kind of introduce and and send film and send information and all that kind of stuff. And then um, after that, you know, I'll be given my cell phone and um 
talk on the phone, text. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy. I've been starting to, uh, you know, even using social media, like some some recruits just prefer, you know, going through DMs and, and stuff right. like that. And so there's just a lot of different ways um, to, to contact these days. But uh, but, yeah, I think, you know, anyone that we're not already talking to, if you shoot me an email, then we'll we'll connect with phone. And I know texting and calling is is and even FaceTiming um, is a lot more popular than than email. But uh, that that initial email is a good way to to kind of get things rolling. So cool. So just to wrap things up, obviously, the big thing on campus is the opening of the new BHWC, the new athletic facility. Um, looking at that complex, how are some of the ways that you see it impacting men's basketball here for the future? Well, it's incredible. I mean, what's what's so cool is, you know, when you drive kind of around to the stadium, just the kind of the environment it builds without even people being there. I mean, just kind of it encloses the stadium and, and makes it feel really big time. And, and I think it's just so cool how the university – uh, is investing in athletics. And so, you know, I, as far as a direct use, I'm sure we'll be over there with, you know, maybe some some conditioning and, and uh, maybe we'll do some fun events over there and, and whatever. But uh, but I think it's more just a reflection of, of how this university views athletics and how big of a deal. I'm so happy for our, you know, our outdoor sports who have a place to go uh, that is uh, – makes so much more sense for them than having to be cramped in, you know, a gym or, or whatever. And I, I think, you know, it's just going to lift the whole athletic department having a facility like that. Um, and then, you know, it's not part of the facility, but even just the resurfacing of our, our gym floor uh, this summer is awesome. I mean, it looks so, so great, so sharp and uh, definitely thankful for, uh, you know, the, the money and time put into that because it just makes a, a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. And if any, anybody hasn't seen the new gym floor, go to Finding Buskies on Twitter, Instagram, post some photos of it when it was finished up a couple weeks back. Check it out. It looks really cool compared to the to the gym that we've yes. had for the past about 20 years. So it's it's awesome. Yeah. So, Coach, that's, that's all I've got for you. want to appreciate you coming on, talking to us, getting – uh, some fans, some Muskingum community to get to know you a little bit more. It's been awesome getting to know you and everything. I'm look, looking forward to working with you here this season. So, Awesome. Thanks, Jake. This was great. Yep. Thanks, Coach.